How do you decide what to do? That's a topic of our next and final two lectures in this class. In the first lecture, this one, we're going to focus on inductive reasoning. And inductive reasoning is when you observe or collect data or look at graphs and use that information to make predictions about how likely something is to occur in the future or how likely a particular person or event is a member of some category. So the sorts of questions that are answered in inductive reasoning include things like, well, now during the COVID pandemic, how safe is it to go to the grocery store with a mask on? How safe is it to have a friend over? Will the pandemic end next year? And the two people who conducted the most influential research on this topic are shown here, Danny Kahneman and Amos Traversky. They actually won the Nobel Prize. Well, I should be more specific. Um, their work won the Nobel Prize. Danny Kahneman won the Nobel Prize for both of them. He dedicated it to Amos. Uh, Danny and Amos had an incredible working relationship. Uh, unfortunately, Amos died before the Nobel Prize could be awarded, and it turns out Nobel Prizes only go to living people. Uh, Danny was married to Ann Treisman, who you remember from our attention lectures, and Amos was married to Barbara, who's an incredible researcher on spatial cognition, and so talk about a power couple, wow. So uh, Kahneman and Traversky conducted all sorts of research on how people make decisions. And Kahneman put all that work together and came up with an overarching or umbrella hypothesis that we have two different systems that we use to make decisions, a fast thinking system and a slow thinking system. If I ask you to answer a question just according to your gut instinct, to not think about it, just give me your first reaction, that's fast thinking. That's when we use quick and dirty rules called heuristics, which we'll focus on in this lecture, to make our decisions. These rules are largely unconscious. Um, they feel emotional. Sometimes you can refer to fast thinking as emotional thinking. And there's another kind of thinking, slow thinking, in which you, you, know, you become very systematic, sort of like Spock in Star Trek. Uh, you go through all the data very carefully and do precise calculations to come up with precise answers. Slow thinking generates answers and decisions that we're consciously aware of, and fast thinking generates decision-making processes that are unconscious. Heuristics are used to give sort of informal, less precise answers to questions. There's our first gut reaction. Guesstimates, shortcuts. You know that two times two equals four. You just know it in your gut. You don't have to work it out. That's fast thinking. So let's use the example of something that you have to deal with right now during the COVID pandemic. So let's say you really, you feel lonely and you'd really like to have some friends over to hang out and watch Netflix. How safe is it? Well, you can make that decision based on either fast thinking or slow thinking. Slow thinking, you might go to the Los Angeles uh, Department of Health and look up the probabilities that each person is contagious with COVID. And as of last uh, week, it was one out of every 145 people in LA is contagious with COVID. Obviously, the number that has COVID would be much higher than that. Or you could use fast thinking. And your fast thinking solution to that might be, hmm, do I know anybody personally who has COVID? No, so it must be low risk, or yeah, so let's not do it. That's where COVID has really bit people. Uh, by the time you know people who have it, you've probably got it too. So fast thinking doesn't work for making decisions about COVID. So these quick and dirty rules, heuristics, there are a lot of them. We're just going to cover six of them. Representativeness heuristic, planning fallacy, overconfidence, availability heuristic, anchoring, and framing effects.